Hey freelancers and everyone else. If you are new to my channel, my name is Marianne Ramish. I am a freelancer in Los Angeles, California, and I am constantly trying to get my life together. Thanks so much for joining me. <laughs> Today's video is all about budgeting 101. If you started watching my channel years ago, you know that it started as primarily a budget channel, but over time it became more about building a productive life. Why is that? Well, in my line of work as a freelancer, it's really hard to stay on budget. It's really hard to know what your budget even is. It's hard. It's hard. And while I know that some of you aren't going to be judging me when I fall off the wagon and make mistakes, I kept feeling ashamed when things didn't go the way I thought they would. At a certain point, I started taking on debt again. That's when my videos stopped. This was Murphy's Law for sure. Anything that can happen will happen. My cat broke his leg, as some of you know from previous videos, and that was 1500 bucks. My computer, which had been on the fritz since I bought it, finally crashed down on me and I had no money for it, and a lot of my income is based on having a computer, so... I bought a new computer. Then I just totally fell off the wagon because I was upset. <laughs> Budgeting became overwhelming, so I stopped. I felt like I didn't have the authority to talk to you guys about budgeting anymore because I failed. I really thought about abandoning YouTube altogether, but there's so many reasons that I love it. There's so many reasons that it's a good idea for me to keep doing it. So here I am, and I, I had this thought, I can't be the only person who has failed at a budget. Even of the YouTuber community, I can't be the only YouTuber who talks about budgeting that has failed at their budget. And I am sure of the number of us that there are, there are so many people that watch YouTube budgeting videos that can relate to that failing feeling. So I decided to come back. And I decided to make my channel a little bit more about general self-care, productivity, budgeting, and balancing life, and not just focusing on budgets, which is much healthier for me. So if you fall into the category of someone who can relate to falling off the budgeting bandwagon, it's time for you and I to come to terms with the damage. The very first step to getting back on track is to get a look at the big picture again. First, write down all of your checking and savings accounts and their balances. As a freelancer, my money is always super scattered, so bear with me as I walk you through my accounts. I have my first account, which has $1,384 in it. Of that, however, two checks have been written. One was for a bunch of car repairs that came up that totaled $490. And $832 to my manager, which was their cut of money I made from an acting job a month or so ago. That actually leaves me with only $62 in that account, so not quite as healthy as it looks on the page. My other account has $24.82 in it. And my third account has $216 in it. So I have those three accounts and spread across those three accounts, I have a total of $302 to work with for my budget at the moment. I have no emergency fund. <sighs> Step number two is to write out all of your debts. Mine are $450. $3,300, $4,058.03, and $20,114.12. That is credit cards, student loans, personal loans that were also for school. And the grand total is $27,922.15. I've definitely done some damage on the progress I had made definitely. But on the bright side, I looked back and when I started my channel, I had $33,060 of debt. So that's still progress. That's still progress. I'm still on the right track. If I get, 
get back in focus mode with my budgeting. We got this. Okay, so that's actually kind of encouraging, because I thought that I had undone all of it, and I haven't. Thank you. The third step is to write down all of your bills for the month. Right now, it's a little ways into the month, so some of the bills have already been paid, but some of them haven't. So, so far, I still have to pay rent, $750. Internet is $72.67. My phone bill is $35. Water is $60. Car insurance is $65.15. And my groceries for the rest of the month are $200. Okay. $300 into all of that. Can you tell that this makes me nervous? Budgeting is hard. How are you guys doing? Let me know. Let me know how how things are shaping up in the comments. Now, step four is the regular income rule of thumb. Plan what to do with the money you already have. Not the money you will have, but the money you already have. That's something that you need a budget. The app really drives home. It part of the trap I kept falling into was counting my chickens before they hatched. I only have this much money. As far as I know, it's all the money I'm going to have for the rest of the month. Technically, I'm sure I will get more money. I have a few checks from editing coming in. I have money from babysitting coming in. As of right now, I have $302. Yeah, $302. That's what I'm budgeting with. Forgive me for looking down a bunch. This is where I did all of the math. My sister is actually in town, so we're going to be doing stuff today that is a little touristy, and so some of the $302 it has to be dedicated to that. We're going to the LA Tar Pits, and that's going to be $17 for parking at the LACMA lot. We are also going to some tiki bars to have some tiki drinks. I'm going to budget $72 for that, for drinks for me and my boyfriend. It's not just for the drinks, for dinner, too. And then after my sister leaves town tomorrow, I'm going to need to go buy groceries. It's hard for me to spend less than $120 on groceries because of things like toilet paper, paper towel, replacing condiments, all of that sort of stuff. So $120 will be my budget for that. That leaves me with, hmm, $93. Really? $302 minus the $72, the $17, and the $120 is $93. Okay. Are you guys with me? Keeping track? I have $302 to my name. I know how much debt I have. I know how many bills I have. I know how much money I'm spending today. And in the next few days, with that $302, I have $93 left. Now is when I go back to that list of bills and try to make a plan for the remaining money. With the $93, I could cover my higher internet bill, but my water bill actually comes out of my account automatically sooner rather than later. So I want to make sure that that's covered so I don't get an overdraft fee. So the $93 is just going to go live in that account until the water comes out because that's also a variable expense. You never know quite how much it's going to be. That actually brings me to my fifth step, which is making sure the money is where it needs to be. I fall into this trap all the time. I have an automatic payment coming out the next day and all of my money is in the wrong account and it's gonna take two days to transfer the money. <laughs> Fortunately, usually, usually I'm able to write a check and get it all in the right spot in time, but make sure you're on top of that because that can come back to bite you and make you have less money overall because of late fees or overdraft fees and nobody has money for that. It happens, so don't beat yourself up if it happens, but don't let it happen. <laughs> How do you feel? Stressed because you still have so many bills that aren't covered? Yeah, yeah, that's how I feel, but I'm gonna make it work. I have more money coming in, obviously, and the important thing is paying attention again and doing these steps pretty much every day until I develop the habit again. It's gonna be a long haul, but I've got you guys and you've got me, so we can do this and we can get back on track. We took the first five steps, not even the first step, we took the first five steps. Hmm. So feel good about yourself. <laughs> that is it for today's 
video. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe and let me know how your budget's going in the comments down below. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.